Hey guys, electricity and tube amps can be dangerous and deadly. Please take the time to pause this and read the safety warning and please be safe. Hello everybody and thanks for tuning back in. Uh, this video is going to be part two of our 57 Tweed uh, 5 watt 5F1 circuit uh, amp kit build from uh, stumac.com. In this video we're going to be completing the steps. We're going to be following the build guide and they have us start out by uh, prepping the cabinet. So. This video won't be too in depth, uh, but we'll be doing, we'll be mounting the, the power port, power cord clamp inside the, the, the speaker box. We'll be soldering the leads onto the Jensen speaker, uh, soldering on the uh, RCA jack that will be going into the amp chassis eventually, mounting the speaker inside the, the uh, speaker box, and then it also has mounting the, there's a, the tube placement chart which is it goes on the inside and an optional step of putting in the shielding all right we'll go ahead and start we're going to be doing step one which will be mounting the power cord port, power cord clamp inside the the speaker box uh, per the instructions there's going to be an area inside the box in the lower left hand corner on the left hand side which is about in this area here and we're going to be uh, doing a pilot hole and then mounting in the clamp which is just a, a screw and then a plastic retainer so it's pretty straightforward i'm going to go ahead and drill the pilot hole and then uh, get this mounted up all right and got the uh, box on its side and uh, print instructions says, says pick an area about two by two i'm not going to measure this out i'm just going to eyeball it um, but i'm just going to be drilling a pilot hole uh, in this area right here I didn't specify how deep to go, but I just went enough in to uh, get that wood screw uh, some, some some area to, to start tapping it. All right, got the uh, pilot hole drilled, ready to put this in. Uh, just going to use it by hand. I'm using the the uh, Chapman screwdriver set that I've done a previous review on. And we'll see how this works. Went in no issues. Uh, pilot holes needed, or probably not needed, but uh, definitely makes it easier to get the screw started. With that step done, we'll go ahead and move to step two, which is uh, going to be soldering the speaker leads so we, using the white and back pushback wire that came with the kit. And uh, we'll go ahead and soldering those to the back side of the Jensen speaker. And before I start soldering, if anyone's curious of what type of iron I'm using, I'm using a an Xtronic model 3020 soldering iron and using a uh, Kester uh, 6040 solder. Uh, I, this iron, it's, it, it does pretty well. I, I don't remember the exact price on Amazon, but uh, for the kit, I think it was around $60, which is uh, much cheaper than some of the, the better uh, soldering irons that are recommended, but for the money, it, it seems to do a very good job. It's got a digital power meter on there and, and uh, for all the soldering that I've used, it, it does really well. Okay, for this, for this, the instructors are telling me to use the the white wire to put it onto the positive terminal, which is on the left, and then the black would be going the negative terminal, which is on the right. I'm also going to have to. Uh, it looks like these these wires don't come pre tin so I'm going to go ahead and pre tin those uh, before I do the solder joint. So, so free for pre tinning all you have to do is. Uh, Get a dab of solder on the tip of your your soldering iron it'll beat up like that and then you just kind of paint it over the uh the tip and because i'm using a rosin core solder it uh the rosin will help make it stick to that so i'll make the first joint all right to make the first joint i went ahead and took the pretend lead i kind of hooked it and then i put it onto the terminal now i'm just going to make the soldering joint just put the iron down here to preheat it, wait till it gets warm, and then put the solder into the joint. And 
and after it's it's on there pretty good and now I'm going to do the same thing with the negative I'm going to pretend the wire in so now that tip it's pretend now I got the black wire on the post and ready to solder this joint. And now the speaker's got both posts soldered. All right, and the next step, we're gonna be uh, doing the other side of the wire lead coming off the speaker. And we're gonna be soldering, uh, looks like an RCA style jack where you have a center post that gets pushed into the socket. So by this, it's gonna have the black, black uh, negative lead going to the outer shield up here. And then the positive white wire will be coming down and get soldered into the tip and then soldering the tip of this. I also uh, doesn't have this in instructions but uh, I, I plan on using some shrink wrap. I'm going to put this on this joint to, so when after the joint's done to make this look a little bit nicer. Before I make the uh, solder it doesn't say in the instructions but it, it shows in the manual I'm going to go ahead and twist these wires before this to that'll help them kind of stay together and then uh, that also helps with the electromagnetic electromagnetic interference by by keeping the wires twisted so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then get ready to do the rca jack okay so i got the the wires twisted uh they they give you a lot so that's probably more so if i put this in there i, I was able to kind of line up to find out where how much i needed so i think i probably got an extra six or seven inches on there so i'm going to go ahead and, and make that cut using some uh, cable cutters or wire cutters rather it's not and, and that also makes sure that these are both the same length so when i insert them into the rca jack they're ready to go i'm also going to be sliding a piece of the shrink wrap over so i'll be able to once the solder joint's done Go ahead and, and bring that up onto the RCA jack to, to make it a little bit nicer. Okay, so by the instructions, it has me taking and, and inserting the white all the way through into the tip, be soldering that, and then the the negative will be going and get soldering soldered to the side. Uh, so like before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pretend these tips to, to make it a little bit easier to make the solder yeah both of these are now pre tin uh, to make this joint a little bit easier i have the the positive which is the white i got that in the rca with, with the i don't know if you can see it but there, it's barely protruding out the tip so i'm going to go ahead and make that solder this is a, a pan of ice uh, this didn't come with the kit but i have this and it makes it, these types of solder joints much easier it gives you an extra set of hands and, and keeps the heat away from your hands and for this i'm going to be putting a drop of rosin or resin into there that'll just help the solder when it comes out go in, go in, inside the tip uh, the instruction says does be do be care, careful when doing this because if you get any solder on the outside that that may impede its ability from going into the RCA jack so I'm just get a drop of solder here and hopefully that'll go right here in the hole. All right. That went right.
right in and uh, it seems to have a good connection. Now I'm going to be doing the same thing with the negative which is on the side and this is actually a little more difficult than I thought it would be. So I'm going to put some resin or rosin on the outside edge to help that stick to the, to the RCA outer, outer shaft. And I'm going to start out by doing some pretend. I'm trying to just get the initial joint. And here's the completed connection. Uh, yeah, I would say for this, you would almost need some, some rosin to make that joint. And doing the inspection on this, I, I found of a, a potential, not necessarily design flaw, but a potential issue. Uh, so because this is pushback wire, it, uh, it easily goes back and uh, where the positive enters into the housing to go into this positive tip it's kind of a tight fit with this uh, fabric outer cladding and if you're not careful this could get pushed back when you do that which uh, exposes or is tough to see but right here at this rim there's potential if if there's no fabric between this outer clad and the wire going into the center post it could be cause a uh, a, a short place where your signal instead of going to the speaker code could go ahead and just go ground straight to go, or speaker could come in and just go straight to ground so to combat that I went and took the tip of uh, my multimeter which you can use anything that's small enough and I went through and I just made sure I pushed that up in there to make sure there's insulation between the uh, core of the positive and this outer negative shielding all right, now that we got the uh, wire soldered onto the speaker on both ends, uh, the next step is uh, to install the speaker. So I went ahead and uh, removed those four nuts that goes on the baffle inside the speaker box. Uh, they appear to be around uh, around nine millimeters. I went ahead and removed those, and now I'm just going to go ahead and put that in there. And it tells you to do a crisscross pattern to to make sure you don't get any warping on the rim of the speaker. Here we go, we got uh, the speaker fully installed in the speaker box. It was a bit of a snug fit getting them onto the post, but uh, when I kind of changed the approach angle, they went right on. And uh, the, I will note that the instructions got pretty concise uh, instructions on how to do these. You, you kind of take them all to, to snug hand tight and then slowly uh, quarter by quarter in the crisscross pattern I bring them up to uh, to tension to make sure that you don't over tighten one and there's equal pressure in all, all four of the uh, screws. All right, the next step is going to be uh, gluing the two placement chart inside the speaker cabinet. Uh, the instructions come with two full size printouts here that you you can cut out and do that, and it tells you what type of fuse what the speaker jack looks like and then a tube complement which is a 12ax7 a 6v6 and a 5y3 i'm going to go ahead and skip this step for now just because i don't have any uh, glue to, to make that happen but I, I will do that before the end of the build and the last step in prepping the cabinet is optional and it's going to be placing this uh, copper foil tape on the back side of the cover that will be closest to your tubes to help radi uh, provide shielding for the heat coming off the tubes and then also to help eliminate external electromagnetic interference coming in. Uh, it's optional, I I'm going to be doing this, but instead of the tape that came with the kit, uh, I've misplaced that somewhere, but I'm gonna be using the same type of, same type of tape. Uh, this is just silver and this is what normally what you use to uh, do the joints on AC ducting so I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, so this tape's pretty easy to work with it's just uh, got an adhesive backing so just take this off and then uh, go ahead and apply it to to the uh, back paddle wood all right so here's uh, the finished back plate for next to the tube amp uh, 
I guess since there's a blessing in disguise, use, losing the other tape and using this AC heating duct tape. Uh, aside from also being metal and, and accomplishing the same thing as the other one, uh, the adhesive on this is designed to go into AC heating duct where you have a huge temperature swing between hot and cold. Um, and the instructions recommends using staples in the corners of, of the other tape to make sure it doesn't come up. And uh, I don't have a stapler, but because this is designed to be used in a heating system, uh, I'm hoping that uh, I won't have any issues with uh, the tape deciding to, to come up in the corners. So that pretty much finished up this video of part two of the 57 Stumac Tweed 5 watt uh, amp build. Just to recap what we did, uh, in the first step we went mounted the power cord clamp inside the amp cabinet and then we go it, we went ahead and prepped the speaker by soldering on the wire leads on both the speaker and prepping the RCA jack. We mounted it inside the cabinet and then put on uh, the heat shield on the, the back plate that's going to be close to the tubes. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And if you're happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, about this video. And I'll see you in the next one.